The Duke and his senators are having a strategic military meeting about the Turkish army and how they are approaching Cyprus. Eventually, a sailor alerts them, saying that the Turkish army seems to be turning towards Rhodes instead, another island controlled by Venice. But the first senator and the duke do not buy into the idea that the Turks are actually intending on conquering Rhodes. They speak about how Cyprus is important to the Turks, and that since Cyprus isn't as well guarded as Rhodes is, this must be some sort of military tactic stemming from the art of diversion. Then, a moment later, a new messenger enters to confirm that the Turkish army is actually turning back towards Cyprus, making the senator and the duke correct about their prediction. But as they discuss their military concerns, they are abruptly interrupted. Brabantio immediately tells the duke that a man has stolen his daughter, and to this, the duke responds quite favorably and is almost ready to punish the man immediately. Happy to see that the duke seems to be supportive of Brabantio's accusations, Brabantio then goes on to immediately turn towards Othello and accuses him to be the very man who stole his daughter. But now that Othello is known to be the man who is being accused, the duke slows down on his word and asks Othello, What in your part can you say to this? In response to being given an opportunity to defend himself, Othello says that he can tell the story of how he and Desdemona legitimately fell in love with each other. But Brabantio cannot hold himself still and starts to accuse Othello with a barrage of insults. This time, however, the Duke is not so quick to support Brabantio and says that before making any rash decisions, there needs to at least be some sort of proof that Othello is in fact in the wrong. Othello asks them to first bring Desdemona, and while Iago is sent to fetch her, Othello starts to speak of their love story. He tells a story of how Brabantio would always ask Othello to tell his war stories to him. And when he did tell his stories to Brabantio, Desdemona was always very attentive and interested. And as time passed by, she had the chance to hear more of his difficult life stories, and eventually, through a natural process, they fell in love with each other. At this point, Desdemona and Iago enter the scene. The Duke is already leaning towards the side of Othello and says, I think this tale would win my daughter too. Good Brabantio, take up this mangled matter at the best. But as a last resort, Brabantio asks for a chance to have Desdemona speak for herself. He says that if it was in her own will to love him, then he would not accuse Othello anymore. He ends with a heavy question asking her where her obedience lies. And although Desdemona has a difficult time answering this, she does take her husband's side and tells her father that she must now love her husband the same way her mother loved her father, namely him. This ends Brabantio's concerns and he reluctantly decides to let go of the matter, giving the duke his time and space to go back to his state affairs. The Duke moves on to request that Othello goes to Cyprus to prepare for the battles against the Turks. And Othello agrees to do this with a request of his own, that his wife be taken care of properly by the state. But when the Duke first suggests that Desdemona should stay at her father's place, Brabantio, Othello, and Desdemona all disagree to this idea. In fact, she tells the Duke that she wishes to be alongside her husband. So the Duke takes Desdemona by her decision and decides to end the meeting for the night and start again in the morning tomorrow. He asks Othello to name a trusted officer who can help him to bring his commission and other important things, and Othello names Iago as his honest and trustworthy man. While the men start to leave, Brabantio slips in a comment to Othello which reveals how unhappy he really is. Look to her, Moor. If thou hast eyes to see, she has deceived her father, and may thee. 
As the Duke, Brabantio, Cassio, and the Senators leave, Othello assigns his wife to Iago and his wife, so that she can get prepared for the leave. As everyone exits the room, the only people left are Rodrigo and Iago. Rodrigo says that he just wants to kill himself by drowning. But Iago thinks that this is a silly idea. Iago tells Rodrigo over and over again to sell his land and everything he's got so that he may be able to get together the funds in order to try to win over Desdemona. Iago tells Rodrigo that he will get Desdemona to be with Rodrigo eventually. And with that, Rodrigo exits the room, leaving only Iago in the scene for his first soliloquy. In Iago's soliloquy, he further shows his hate for Othello. He admits that he's even heard rumors saying that Othello has slept with his own wife as well. He plans to lie to Othello, saying that Cassio is seducing Desdemona. The Moor is of a free and open nature that thinks men honest that but seems to be so and will as tenderly be led by the nose as asses are. I have it. <laughs> it is engendered. Hell and night must bring this monstrous birth to the world's light. 